In the deepest, darkest jungles of Africa lies a place of legends. With mountains of ice and lakes of fire. The impenetrable jungles are filled with mysterious beasts. And are home to the wildest of people. Prepare to enter Africa's fiery heart. The Varungas are a tropical land of ice and fire. They are located along the crest of the mountainous backbone of Africa and straddled Uganda, Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The Varungas are in the heart of the legendary land of King Solomon's mines. They hide the long sword source of the Nile and are the rumored lair of killer apes like King Kong. This mysterious and traumatic land is cloaked by mists and blanketed by the densest of tropical jungles, whose trees are filled with more types of monkey than anywhere else in the world. This region was the last place in Africa to be discovered by explorers in the 1880s. Why did this mysterious land remain an enigma for so long? What secrets lie hidden inside the dense jungle interior? And why do so many animals and people live in the deadly shadow of its volcanoes? This whole region is volcanic. A branch of Africa's Great Rift Valley. The Virunga Mountains are a chain of eight volcanoes. While six of the Virungas are dormant, two are very much alive. Nyiragongo is one of the most active volcanoes in the world. Erupting every five to ten years. Its permanent lava lake is one of very few on the planet. At any moment the volcano could erupt, spilling its deadly force across the rich, jungle-clad mountains. which are home to an extraordinary abundance and diversity of life. This volcanic ash-fertilized jungle is a World Heritage Site. A 
and some extraordinary animals live here. From colorful birds to exotic lizards. And from strange monkeys to great apes. In 1898, a white elephant hunter exploring the Varungas came across the skeleton of a gigantic ape. This sparked rumors of giant, killer beasts rampaging the jungles here. But it wasn't until 1902 that the mountain gorilla subspecies was scientifically recognized for the first time. The largest of all gorillas, mountain gorillas, evolved from their lowland cousins after their volatile forest home erupted thousands of years ago. The isolated slopes of the Varungas are one of only two places in the world where mountain gorillas can be found. About 400 survive here today. But even though they can look fierce, they are in fact very placid animals. Mountain gorillas live at altitudes of more than 3,000 meters where the temperature plummets to near freezing at night. How is it possible such large animals can survive so high up in the cold? A thick, insulating coat protects them and keeps them warm. They have huge appetites, eating over 20 kilograms of food a day to sustain their 1.8 meter high frame and 180 kilogram massive bulk. This kind of extreme feeding is only possible in the very rich jungles, which have been fertilized by mineral rich ash from thousands of years of volcanic eruptions. As the volcanoes Naira Gongo and her sister Nayamuragira breathe their poisonous breath over the whole region, the thick forest cover acts as a filter, protecting and hiding the life beneath the dense canopy. It's the thick clouds and steep impenetrable jungles that prevented white explorers from venturing into this land for many years. The Varungas became a land lost in time. The ancient writings of the Egyptians told tales of a strange and secretive people who lived in the deepest of jungles on the steep slopes of the Virungas. Our pygmies are the original ancient dwellers of the forest. They survive between 1 and 2,000 meters on the steep slopes of the volcanoes, where they have lived for several thousands of years. They rely on hunting, but the jungle doesn't give up its prizes that easily. Each batwa must become an expert hunter. able to melt into the jungle's backdrop and stalk their prey.
poison-tipped arrows speed up the kill. Jungle pigs are rare, but this kill will keep the Batwa fed for a couple of days. The Batwa are famed for their dancing and singing, and the ancient Egyptians described these pygmies as dancing dwarves from the land of the spirits. It wasn't until 1890 that white explorers first met the Batwa, the world's smallest people. Pygmies are on average around a meter and a half tall. Scientists think they are so small, so they can survive on very few calories. The forest is not suitable for crops or livestock, so the Batwa are forced to survive by hunting and gathering what they can. Their staple diet is fruit, vegetables and meat from the forest, all of which are difficult to find. They live in small temporary huts constructed with leaves and branches. These are abandoned after a few months when they relocate to another part of the forest in search of fresh supplies of food. Finding constant food here is so challenging that the Batwa are prepared to go to extremes, especially for a sweet treat. This Batwa uses an age-old technique of smoking out bees so he can collect the honey for his family. Only a few Batwa are experienced enough to brave the angry insects. With no protective gear, he's at the mercy of the bee's anger but the smoke helps to calm the bees down and prevents them from stinging him. The Batwa are timeless. They sing and dance to rejoice and celebrate the successful hunt. They exist in this exotic forest much as they have for the last several thousand years. By only taking what they need and moving ever onwards, they have achieved a harmony with nature that has no need for change. And if their forest home remains stable, they could live here for many more years to come. but a permanent threat lies over their jungle home. Nyaira Gongo could erupt at any time. Its lava lake is always active. Bubbling away at a thousand degrees Celsius, lava is molten rock. It is usually a hundred thousand times thicker than water. But Nyaragongo's lava is unusually fluid because of a unique chemical makeup. And during eruptions, races downhill at up to a hundred kilometers an hour. During the last major eruption in 2002, a 13 kilometer fissure opened in the south flank of the volcano.
poured out from the fissure and flowed in a stream up to 1,000 meters wide and up to two meters deep. It covered 16 kilometers, reaching the town of Goma in just a few minutes, killing dozens of people and leaving hundreds of thousands homeless. The local wildlife was also forced to flee as their Garden of Eden became a living hell. But nature soon recovered and the volcanic ash fertilized the jungle, making it even richer than it was before. It now provides food and shelter for some amazing animals who've chosen to make the Virungas home. Around 500 meters further down the slopes from the mountain gorillas lives another great ape. Dark, familiar eyes peer out from behind a veil of green. They belong to our closest living relatives, chimpanzees. These apes share 98% of their genes with humans. By observing them, we hold up a mirror to see our ancient ancestors. Chimps live in large mixed groups of males and females, led by an alpha male. They are well adapted to their forest life by being excellent climbers and by helping each other in the search for food, such as fruits, flowers and leaves, which are found in abundance in this rich, verdant rainforest. Because they are so large, they have no natural predators. Their only threat comes from farmers encroaching upon their forest habitat. They unwind by grooming each other. As well as keeping each other clean, grooming is also very relaxing and helps to maintain friendly relationships among family and other troop members. This six-month-old baby has a lot to learn if he's to climb the social ladder. But for now, he's content to hone his jungle skills by practicing his tree climbing. Whilst his mother looks anxiously on. As in humans, childhood is a time for learning. Play is an important activity for young chimpanzees. This mother knows that if her baby falls and hurts himself, his injuries could be fatal. So she watches him carefully, ready to chastise any particularly dangerous stunts. Communication is very important to chimpanzee society. The pant hoot is the most commonly heard call 
and is used to express excitement and feelings of sociability. Although chimps are excellent climbers, they prefer to travel longer distances on the jungle floor, where it's easier to move about. They feast on ripened fruits that have fallen to the ground. Up in the canopy of these forested slopes lives a rich community of plants, animals and birds. The forest echoes with their calls. The Virungas are home to around 700 species of bird, and within the forest lives one of Africa's best known architects. Weaver birds get their name because of their elaborately woven nests. This tree is home to two separate species. Each builds nests of differing sizes and shapes. They usually use finely fibers, grass and twigs for building materials. It's the males who weave the nests and use them as a form of display to lure prospective mates. They weave a ring which they can then build on. The weaving is done by threading the grasses into a knot this male is still in the early stages of building his nest. His neighbor is much further ahead and has built a roof. But this neighborhood is not the friendliest of places. While this male collects more grass, his neighbor sees an opportunity. And attempts to steal from his nest. The male returns and his neighbor's vandalism is thwarted. And so tit for tat, the neighbor's nest now gets raided as well. It's little better next door. Two males are fighting over territory. In order to attract a female, these males flap their wings. This one has finally got the attention of a potential partner. She inspects the nest. If she likes what she sees, she'll move in. But she's not impressed and moves on. The branches of the jungle trees are home to great numbers of monkeys. Because of the abundance of food in the canopy, red-tailed monkeys rarely come down to the forest floor. The 
ground is patrolled by baboons, who eat fallen fruits and insects. They roam the slopes in large troops. The jungle's bounty is a paradise for all who live here. Baboons are opportunistic feeders, eating wherever, whenever, and whatever they can. They travel up to six kilometers a day in search of food. But as darkness falls, all the monkeys take to the trees. In the baboon troop, a few keep guard because deep in the forest, there's reason to be scared of the dark. Leopards are highly capable hunters, very agile in the trees, and they can also survive at altitude. Making them the perfect predator to stalk the montane rainforests of the Virunga volcanoes. Agitated by the brewing storm, the baboon troop is on edge. But this makes no difference to the prowling leopard. The noise of thunder masks its movements. And confuses the baboons. The leopard is swift, powerful, and ruthless. become isolated from the rest of the troop, and the leopard hones in. Baboons have poor night vision and are the most likely monkey to fall prey to leopards. The leopard devours the baboon while still in the tree. To drop it to the ground would risk sacrificing it to scavenging hyenas. But this kill was not without risk for the leopard. Large baboon troops have been known to mob and severely injure them. But this night's success goes to the big cat. Leopards are too heavy to hunt in the very tops of the trees so smaller monkeys usually stick to the highest canopy for safety. But some treats are just too good to miss out on. These Mangabe monkeys have come across an abundant oasis 
in the heart of the jungle. A mineral rich swamp. Manga bees will eat just about anything, and swamp weed is a particular favorite. The call of the black and white colobus monkey rings out. Its guttural sound comes from the back of its throat and is used to announce territory. The pickings are so good, both species forage side by side. A baby manga bee is quick to learn to indulge in the tasty buffet. Others use all their cunning and agility to reach far out into the swamp. But they mustn't make the fatal mistake of lowering their guard for a single minute. This murky swamp hides a killer in the water. Alarm calls and agility save the monkeys. This time. The extremely rich volcanic jungle can support more primates than anywhere else in the world. Over 13 separate types live here. This is a world of monkeys, who, while mindful of predators, live oblivious to the ever-present threat of the volcano's deadly force. The Ugandan red colobus monkey is already endangered. Only about 2,000 are left in the wild. Their numbers are dwindling because they're being heavily hunted. These monkeys are superb tree-living acrobats. Seeking out the safety of the canopy's branches, they are safe from leopard attacks. They need to eat a wide variety of plants throughout the year, which can only be found in this rich rainforest habitat. The name Colobus means mutilated in Greek. They're so called because they don't have a thumb. Because of this, baby monkeys must have an extra strong grip when learning to climb. All seems tranquil, but in the jungle, 
danger is never far away. The peace is disturbed by an alarm call. Confusion causes the colobus to scatter straight into the arms of killer apes. The chimps are stationed at all possible exit points. The colobus have nowhere to hide and the chimps are fast and focused. dive bomb the chimps. But fueled by testosterone, the male chimps kill quickly. Meat is a highly prized commodity. Ever mindful of politics, the successful hunters share the spoils with those who they want to curry favor with. Such as females and higher ranking males. It has always been assumed that apes were mainly vegetarians, eating mostly fruit and leaves. But now it's clear the chimps here have a darker side. This troop has a larger number of males than average. Perhaps as a result, they are particularly violent. They're the biggest threat to the Virungas colobus monkeys. This behavior is extremely rare in chimpanzees. Of all the chimp populations studied in Africa, only a couple are known to regularly hunt and eat meat. These dense jungles hold many surprises, including one hidden inside the volcanoes of the Virungas, which could violently erupt at any moment. The hot volcanic lava burning its course through the jungle would kill everything in its path. But there's an even bigger threat, should the volcanoes erupt. If the lava were to reach the lake at their base, it could cause a catastrophe. Lake Kivu is full of volatile, deadly gases. Molten lava would ignite a massive explosion. Kivu is one of only three known exploding lakes in the world. These fishermen come from all over Uganda and Rwanda to fish here, to one of the most dangerous places on the planet. Lake Kivu sits at sea level, upon a fault line, part of the Rift Valley that is still today slowly being pulled apart. This volcanic activity could wipe out life in the surrounding area. Lake Kivu covers a surface area of over 2,500 square kilometers, and at 45 meters deep, it is one of the deepest lakes in the world. The volcanic shifts 
have caused methane and carbon dioxide to build up in massive quantities. It has never exploded, but if the methane were ever ignited, the carbon dioxide released would suffocate life for miles around. And this whole area is richly populated by both people and animals. In fact, one of Uganda's most important wildlife hotspots sits right at the base of the Virungas, Queen Elizabeth National Park. Its landscape is dotted with volcanic craters, dating back over two million years. The volcanic soil enriches the grassland, creating a plentiful home for animals. It's the cob's mating season, and so the savanna is a hive of activity. The males fight to attract the females and to ward off competition. The park's main headquarters are at Mwea Lodge, home to some of the region's most charismatic animals, banded mongooses. These cheeky characters are on the lookout for a free meal. Making the most of tourist leftovers keeps this band well fed. Some of the mongooses don't seem too bright. They're unsure as to what even constitutes food. But this warthog presents an unusual opportunity to the more resourceful members of the band. The mongooses here have discovered that the local warthogs are actually roaming buffets. And the warthogs don't seem to mind either. Some of the hogs even roll onto their sides to offer up a hairy harvest of irritating ticks enjoying the free grooming and de-lysing session. Nooks and crannies are the best sources of particularly large and juicy ticks. The grooming sessions can last up to an hour before the mongooses are replete. And now it's time for a communal rest giving their full stomachs time to digest their strange meal. Banded mongooses are highly sociable and live in groups of about 20. They are very similar to meerkats and spend their days foraging, resting and looking out for each other. The wildlife of the Virungas is thriving for many reasons. The animals benefit from the rich soil, but also from permanent water and rich salt licks. But volcanic activity can be seen all around, a reminder of the ever-present threat. These hot springs well up from beneath the ground, providing salt for animals coming from far and wide. These wetland birds are visiting from the surrounding crater lakes where they live. The ancient lakes scattered around this area were formed millions of years ago by the shifting of the Earth's tectonic plates. 
Known as the African Great Lakes, they are some of the largest and biologically richest lakes in the world. There are nine Great Lakes in total, and many dozens of smaller crater lakes. They are spread over the Rift Valley Depression, which covers over 7,500 square kilometers, and range in altitude from sea level to nearly 3,000 meters. The lakes are fed by freshwater springs and streams, but it was once thought they were the source of the Nile. This sparked an excited wave of white explorers, all desperately searching for the origin of this great river. Some died on their quest. Most came home none the wiser. But in 1888, Henry Morton Stanley, a great British explorer, finally solved the mystery of the Nile by accidentally discovering an unknown mountain range right next to the Virunga volcanoes. It's almost always entirely hidden by mist and clouds. But a brief clearing of the sky allowed Stanley and his party to glimpse this 5,000 meter high mountain chain. The ancient Egyptians described this area as the site of the legendary Mountains of the Moon, so called because of their snow-capped whiteness. Locals called them the Ruinzori, or Rainmaker. And they turned out to be the fabled source of the Nile. The lower parts of the Ruinzori are covered with dense tropical rainforest. Everywhere there is immense fertility due to the very heavy rainfall, falling 300 days of the year, which is why the region's cloud and mist cover is so high. At higher altitudes, the rainforest is replaced by forests made of giant, twisted heather trees, covered by lichens and moss. The Ruinzori three-horned chameleon lives here at altitudes of over 3,000 meters. This miniature triceratops is unique to these mountains and the only chameleon adapted to life at these high altitudes. The plants found here have also adapted to the cooler conditions high up. Close to the snow line, the temperature frequently plummets towards freezing. Finally, towards the peaks, eternal snow and glaciers. It's these melting glaciers that feed the Nile. Like a land lost in time, Permanent snow caps the heart of tropical Africa. So on Africa's equator, ice and fire sit side by side. the Virungas. At any moment, the volcanoes or lakes could explode, causing mass devastation.
fertilizes the dense tropical jungles. Giving birth to a super abundance of life. Mysterious mountains. People. And the wildest of animals. <laughs>